All right, so we're going to try OBS and see how it goes. Here we are in the Yukon. When we first landed, they had us walk up to that lookout tower, and we uncovered this area here, Lumber Shore. And they had us walk down to this little building, and it's kind of like claiming it. The storyline makes you believe that you're here to set up the reserve like for the season so you know it's like claiming it setting it up but the idea is that they do this just to get you to walk around and explore the area uh, as you can see I've already taken a couple of animals uh, I did two caribou and a fox and here was a moose <clears throat> so that's where we're at right now and I guess that's going to be a tree stand, I'm pretty sure. But what we're going to do is probably, you know what, let's try to get to that other little outpost and just claim it. That's what we'll do. Walk off down that way. This game, thankfully, has an auto walk feature called G. You just push the G key and your guy will start walking. Uh, really pretty. The last time that we played, um, we started out just like this. It was a nice sunny day, no snow on the ground, and I guess about 15, 20 minutes into playing, we ran across a bunch of uh, uh, caribou, and we took a couple of those, and then as we were tracking them down to harvest them, it snowed. And at first I was like, oh, okay, that's neat, it's snow, it's like sometimes it rains in the game. But the snow accumulated. Uh, it started sticking to the ground and then to the trees. And, you know, another 15 minutes after that, uh, it was a winter wonderland. So I thought that was really interesting. Um, I visited Alaska around 2008, I guess. Uh, my mom had moved up there. So I went to go see her. And, uh, you know, that's what she said. That it would be nice and warm, like a sunny day. And then... You know, the sun would go behind the clouds, and boom, super cold, uh, snow. Uh, you know what? We I, I thought that was like, you see those little whips, wisps there? I thought that was like, uh, like seeds. You know how like some flowers uh, have like really wispy dandelions, I guess. You know what? That's probably still what it is. I, for a moment, I thought it was snow, but I mean, yeah, it's not snow. There's no clouds. Anyway, very pretty. Very, very pretty. The scope of this game is really nice. Flag physics could use a little bit of upgrade, though. Pretty weak. But, I will say this, that uh, I keep coming back to this game. The developers keep upgrading and... Uh, they keep upgrading things, they keep uh, putting out new challenges, weekly challenges. So it's really nice to see that you get this uh, return on investment. I bought it too on sale, so I think I paid, I'd hate to tell you wrong, but I think I paid like $10 for the base game, that sounds right. And then the add-ons, the Silver Peak and the Quad add-on, and one of the, one of the, uh, weapons pack. I actually added that on too. So I think I'm up to like 20 bucks. Definitely worth it so far. I've definitely played a lot of it and really enjoyed it. There are some things though that I think they could do differently. Um, one of the main ways that you get more money is just by shooting and killing the animals, which is, you know, it's a hunting game. You're supposed to do that, but there's a part of me that thinks that you would... I mean, when I was growing up, me and my father hunted a little bit in Georgia, and I think we only ever got like seven, seven uh, tickets, seven tags, so, you know, that was for the entire season, and, you know, here in this game, you could go out uh, and take, you know, two or three in a day, I mean, I, I took, well, two caribou and a fox and a moose, you know, so it just, it seems like it would be nice if there was another avenue to get experience and money 
besides just, you know, shooting everything you saw. What is that there? Those ducks? Those are ducks. Look at that. That's cool. If we were back near one of the cabins, I would show you the, um, you know, them adding the ducks is really cool, but I don't have a weapon or I don't have an ammo type that is uh, a good fit for taking ducks. Um, like they'll show you all the different, uh, like there's like tons of different ammo types, uh, but there's just not one for ducks that I have, that I have access to. And I haven't checked, um, you know, that could be wrong. Uh, but I feel like, oh, there were ducks right there next to the, uh, that's cool. That's cool. That's what we would have done this episode had I noticed that. We would have checked the uh, storage locker. And we would have, you know, Maybe we'll do it in an episode after this one. Right now we're just walking around the shore trying to get down here. I mean, that is going to be kind of a long walk, but um, it'll be fine. I'm not really looking forward to... Well, I am looking forward to running across uh, an animal of some sort, but I'm not really going to stalk one this episode. Uh, this is my first time getting the recording software set up, so uh, just enjoying it. Oh, I see, I see. Sorry about that, but I just realized there is a clamp, so that it won't fall down so now my audio should be a little bit more stable good 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 yeah like i said i visited in uh 2008 and it was absolutely just beautiful country didn't get to see a moose but i did get to see some bear some wolves foxes um i tell you man i i don't know how people who live in the the city can put up with it. I visited New York um, maybe six years after that. Uh, you know, and just having visited both of those areas, I could not imagine living on the island of New York. Uh, the amount of money you would pay for the, the room you get and the amount of people you'd have to interact with on a daily basis, not to mention compete against. Whoops, so sorry. Not to mention compete against. That yeah, would just drive me bonkers. Very pretty. Let's see what we've got to here on our little journey. I would say we're about halfway. We're about halfway. We actually had a uh, grizzly when I was taking those two caribou and I had shot one of them and I didn't get a good hit on it. I shot it right in the foot or something, which is weird because I was talking about, and that video, unfortunately, the audio was messed up, but I was talking about how the um, bullet doesn't seem to drop. They have, uh, they have an accuracy thing where the gun won't be accurate but they don't have bullet drop so if you can put the crosshair on something hit the shift key to steady your aim and then fire and if you have you know if you roll the dice and get a pretty good accuracy roll on that shot then it should go right where you tell it to um but uh, i guess i shot that thing in the foot somehow uh and i was running all over the top of this mountain trying to find it and a grizzly bear yelled at us gave us that warning call which is really cool because the game is trying to uh you know trying to be realistic where i would assume these animals would in fact try to yell at you if you get too close to them but they also do that i think so that you can track them easier just a good game just it's it's solid the only thing my only complaint is that it doesn't really um it doesn't really champion the 
idea that you should be taking these animals uh, not willy-nilly, not just shooting them for fun, not just shooting them for, you know, for the meat, but you should, you should be invested in the kill. You should be invested in uh, what it is you're doing, and it shouldn't just be, oh, I'll shoot that one, oh, I'll shoot this one, oh, I'll shoot that one. Um, which is my personal opinion, you know. Uh, it'd be nice if they had an alternate way to get money and level up. Besides just shooting everything you saw, and they, they do, they do. That there are uh, there are some missions where they ask you to take pictures of things. Uh, this guy wanted us to go check firewood, which I mean I understand, like, but like I don't I don't know. Like the the storyline always tries to like make it out as you to be some type of hunter or game warden, or uh, uh, I don't know. It just. It's just weird to have people go check for firewood or something. <laughs> but a storyline's a storyline, right? And you can completely ignore that aspect of the game. You don't have to, uh... You don't have to go and check the firewood if you don't want to. You can just ignore him. And walk out into the woods. And do whatever you want to do. Kind of like what we're doing. But it is, like I said, it's a different way to get money in the game, which is nice. Than just killing everything you see. All right, I'm gonna check my map one more time here, and apologies if it's a little too often. But I just didn't want to hit that little spur of the lake and get turned around. Ooh, there's some tracks over there. They did really good with the uh, the game. Like I said, they they built it from the ground up. They have ways to get you, you know involved or if you're out here walking somewhere you you know stumble upon some tracks and i love that they put the poop in here because then you can go up to the poop and you can click on it and if it's uh i see it says it says very old so it knows that this grizzly bear um you know that the grizzly bear is just it's not been here like it this might be an area that it was going from a rest area or from a feeding area to a rest area or to a feeding area but you just know it's not in the area now, so that was cool. And the little mating call we got over there. And the mating call, that's really cool because it tells you, number one, that there's an animal over there for you to hunt. And number two, it tells you that that animal hasn't caught on to you yet, right? If it's doing a mating call, then it's, you know, it's trying to, to do the birds and the bees thing. So it doesn't really know that you're around. If it was a warning call, then, you know, it would know that you're around and, it would take measures to move away from you. But if you hear the mating call, then you can pull out the different lures, right? Uh, that's a turkey, I think. That is... And that's the turkey. Uh, that might be, there might be two different turkey ones. But you can pull out some of the lures, and you can try to lure it in, right? And this would be not a bad spot. Um, there's not a lot of cover. I mean, we could go back there to those trees, uh, get into some cover, and then call it. And if it walked out here... Um, Man, that, that's just a perfect uh, shot. That's, you know, you don't want to take them from 300 yards away or 100 yards away. It'd be great if you can get it from 50. And what you have to do then to get it so close is, um, you know, you don't want to set up a shot like this where you have a bunch of foliage right in front of you because then by the time the animal comes through all that, uh, it's right in front of you. And then if you don't get a good shot on it, it, it runs away and then you're done. It was it. That was your shot. You want a shot like this, right? Where you're in here, you're in cover. You know, the animal comes out of the woods, right? You know, it breaks breaks cover. It's looking for that, uh, the mate, you know, because you called it in. And then, you know, blammo, you get a good shot there. And, yeah, it's going to turn around. And, yeah, it's going to run right back into the woods, which is going to be more difficult tracking it. Uh, but you get that clean shot, you know. And that clean shot, I think, is more important in the tracking because if you can get it in the heart then it just it just plops right over you know but anyway and i'm not i'm not trying to sell you on the game or anything i just if you were thinking about buying it you ran across this video um oh man 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 look at that you see him right there now, I think we spooked one of them because it was running in a circle. You know, it was kind of going all crazy. 
I think there's one there that we didn't spook. You see him there? Now those things usually travel in a herd. But I think we spooked them. Oh, 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 oh my god, there's a bear. Okay, well, we're going to take that shot. i tell you that right now. Hello, Mr. Bear. Oh, brother, I think we got him right in the heart, too. Oh, I think we got him right in the heart, too. That was clean. That was clean. Oh, oh, oh. Woo! I had, uh, I had turned because I saw the caribou, but, uh, it was so funny too because the, the poop was like, oh, it's very old. This is a different, different look at that though. Look at, jeez, look at those things. And of course, it's with any animal you look at it and you're like, oh, those aren't very sharp, man. Those will, those will open you up. So cool. All right, let's look here. It's just a bronze. I feel bad, but we did get the heart. Uh, look at that grizzly veteran. Left, right, heart, and flesh. We just nicked it right there in the top. Female too. Oh, I don't like taking the females. I should have, I should have paid attention to that. Um, how much money? I have six. Let's just go ahead. Uh, are we really going to take Dermy her? She's my first bear. My first grizzly. Um, I don't think so. No, I don't think so. I don't think so. Um, you know what, though? Maybe, just maybe, it's okay for this game to encourage the random shooting of the animal. Uh, because if you go out to hunt for real, you know, uh, I don't think you just shoot whatever you see. Um, but uh, maybe that's part of it. I don't know. Maybe that's part of it. I mean, yeah. Now that I think about it, if see, I grew up and uh, I could just go hunting. My grandmother owned, or still does, owns tons of land in North Georgia. So it literally was just, you know, whenever we wanted to, we would just call and ask. And at most, she would ask us to come by and visit with her before we went out or after we did or something. So. It didn't cost us a penny, you know, but if you lived someplace in the city and you wanted to go hunting and you got out there after all the planning and money you spent and everything and you ran across a, well, what do you want to say, a subpar specimen or something, you know, uh, an animal that really didn't make the cut most of the time. But, you know, you still wanted to have something to show for all the money you spent and time you invested. And yeah, go ahead and shoot it. I guess, right? The little island out there. All these, uh reservations you get yeah i think you get four in the base game you get one in germany uh i think you get one in the u.s you might get one in russia the siberian one that might be an add-on you'd need to check the store but i think you get four hunting grounds in the base game and i tell you the one i've enjoyed the most is the one in germany um I don't know why I've enjoyed that one. I think it's the roe deer. I think it was the idea that, because, you know, when I grew up in Georgia, it was always white-tailed deer. You know, you got to get the big buck, you know, big antlers and stuff. And My dad would tell me stories about, you know, oh, guy hunted for so long. And What is that there? That's a moose, looks like. Mama moose. Man, we just, ooh, what's that? Loose warning call. 
Are you on to me? Do you know that I'm here? How far away is that? Yeah, yeah, they know I'm here. Okay. I tell you what, that's a perfect shot right down the the flank or right down the front right there. You just go for the heart. It's almost like she wants us to do it. Oh, there she goes. Oh, it's our scent. Our scent. Look at the bottom right hand corner. Our smell is going directly to her. It wasn't our noise. Our scent gave us away. Okay, then. Alright. Well, gosh darn it. It was a mom, though. It was, a, it was Mama Moose. I'm okay with not taking that one. Anyway, uh, I think it's the roe deer. I think those being so not hinky dinky but you know just being a little bit more uh you know they're smaller and it was it's not so much about the the bugs and everything and getting the big antlers it's just about hunting you know it's just about going out and, and uh i don't know i just i like the germany one uh the second my second favorite is the parco fernando the downloadable content in South America, I like that one an awful lot. Uh, I think it's the lady. Uh, the storyline down there is, you know, it starts off pretty, uh, pretty, uh, you know, pretty lame, and I didn't quite like it, and kind of like how the guy is here. You know, she would talk all the time, and I'm like, you know what, just hush and let me enjoy the the game but as time went on you know it was it, it just turned into a much better storyline and i liked it she talked about her husband and how she'd lost her husband and the park was one of the last things that he um or not one of the last things but it was one of the things they wanted to do but they just never got around to it and then he passed away so she opened up the park i thought that was great her daughter works there at the park and like one of her missions is she wants you to um, kill something with a, a pistol, it's like a family rite of passage. And I hadn't used a pistol um, till that mission. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. You know, I'll, I'll break out the pistol. Why not? If it's a rite of passage to be part of the family, cool. There's that mama moose again. She's just hanging out in the area. That's okay. We're almost done here. We're pulling in. We got us a, a bar. It'd be nice though if some big old joker would... Well, speak of the devil. Oh! Now there's a warning call, right? That means that he knows we're here. And it's our scent, too. Giving us away again. Have a look here. Don't want that thing to come. See, that's what I was saying. This would be a bad situation, right? Because we got those trees right there in front of us. So if he came barreling out of the bush, we'd only have a moment to react. We'd much rather want to get out here. Where we got some... Got a little bit of... We can see what's coming here. I know I got that station right behind me. I ought to go ahead and just pull into the station and then come out here and look for him. I think that, oh. Well, you know, I tried. I tried to pull me back in, though. Come on. Stick your old head out here. Yogi. Stick your own head out here. Alright. That's going to do it for this episode. We're going to come over here and claim this little cut on the water. Next episode we'll push over there and see if we can't find Yogi. Yogi.